Oh, hello. Today we are starting a reading project and I'm gonna be super interested to see how this goes. So this was inspired by two things that I knew I wanted to do this year. One is following on from my experiment I did at the beginning of the year about like, hey, do I even like literary fiction anymore? Um, I think one of the things I found coming out of that is I do still think I am particularly interested in short stories, which are often literary, but not always, as we will talk about. So that was one thing I was like, you know, it'd be good to kind of have some specific short story time. Like I was thinking maybe I could do short story summer or short story September. This is gonna be a variant of short story summer because the other thing I knew I wanted to do was vlog my reading experience of this new release that is coming out from, I'm not sure if this is the Agatha Christie estate or, yeah, I'm betting that this is the Agatha Christie estate, but basically this is a collection of 12 short stories featuring Miss Marple, but written by 12 different contemporary authors. So it says Agatha Christie in big, bold letters. I guess we could also see this as a follow on to my is this Christie-esque vlog that I did. But we, Agatha Christie is clearly stated as the author, but we have Alyssa Cole and Karen McManus and Val McDermott and Ruth Ware and a bunch of people who have written short stories with Marple as the main character. So I knew I wanted to vlog this, but I was thinking, okay, is there a way to sort of maybe combine this? Cause I didn't quite just want to do a vlog only of this particular book, though I guess I could have. I thought that maybe what we could do, because normally the way I experience short stories is to try to read the collection kind of in one-ish go, like it may be spread out a little bit, but in general I kind of read it all at once. But I thought, what, what would it be like? Because there are 12 short stories in here. What if I read some short stories every day from different collections and the focus really is on the short story reading of it rather than the collection. So I have gathered five different collections and I believe that roughly with the number of short stories in these, I should be reading about five short stories a day. And I think I'll just check in with you every day about what that experience is like uh, with a bunch of different kinds of short stories aimed at different audiences, kind of different levels of literary aspiration, etc. So, as I said, Agatha Christie collection, Miss Marple, with all these different authors, there are 12 in this. This is a mystery short story collection. Then we have what I would probably describe as literary sci-fi, which is Stories of Your Life by Ted Chiang. And this is a collection of eight stories. So this is literary, but also still genre fiction. So I thought this could be an interesting addition. Then we have a group of short stories that are specifically aimed at young readers. This is a middle grade collection edited by Rick Riordan and then he also has a story in here but I believe there are 10 stories in here and these are all fantasy as well so that's another genre. We then have two collections that are I think primarily probably described as literary fiction. This one has an alternative history speculative element to it. Um, the world doesn't require you. I believe that there are 15 stories in here. And then Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Maria Machado. This is, I think, speculative, but sort of like fabulous, but really like literary. So these two are in particular, I think of as literary fiction with speculative elements. So we, as long as I read about five stories a day. I should get through these all in 12 days. And I'm gonna check in with you every day that I do this to talk about what I'm experiencing in the collections, but also just sort of the experience of, I don't know, dedicating some time to short story reading, which is a format of book or story that I really enjoy. So we'll see how this experiment goes. Okay, so day one, we have read a story from each of our five books. I'm not sure about this. I'm gonna tell you because each of these collections has such a different vibe. I'm not sure about changing between them. So today I read in this order, I went the Agatha Christie, uh, the world does not require you curse. What is it? The curse carnival stories of your life and then her body and other parties. And I think that having such a 
difference book to book in the tone was not to my benefit. So I'm gonna go tomorrow kind of from like heaviest to lightest in tone, but um, I liked all of the stories, like none of them were bad. If I were gonna rank, I would probably put it in this order. So we'll start with the best and work our way to the worst, which wasn't the worst, it just not as strong as the others. So Her Body and Other Parties, Carmen Maria Machado, this first story is a doozy about a woman who has a ribbon that her lover is not allowed to touch. And it is a metaphor. And I am realizing that reading this book post the overturning of Roe v. Wade is probably like, I don't know, just everything that's going on right now against women in this country, I feel like this is gonna make me mad, but in a great way. So that was an A plus story, so good. Stories of your life. The first story is about the Tower of Babel or like it's called the Tower of Babylon and about like reaching to the heavens. The writing is as expected, fantastic. Yeah, this was good. I don't know that this was a super memorable story, like didn't like super stick with me, but I admire the craftsmanship of this. Okay, then the Agatha Christie. The first story up was the one from Lucy Foley, which we know I don't have a great track record with Lucy Foley. I liked the idea of this. I was not sold on the execution. I felt like, I don't know, it didn't have the right balance of giving us suspects to telling us the solution, but I liked the idea of the solution. So like a B I think, but I do, this did make me realize that I'm excited to get a bunch of different Marples. Like I'm excited to see what each author does with her because this version of Marple was sort of more, mm, how to say, earthier or like less inaccessible. This was a more like relatable Marple than I feel like we typically get. So anyway, I'm excited to see what other Marples we may get. The World Does Not Require You. This is set in an alternative history where there was a successful uprising of enslaved people in this county in Maryland. And it's a bunch of different stories. I'm gonna be honest, guys, I'm not sure I got this because this was basically with God's 13th son, David. <laughs> <laughs> and the kind of a story of his life. He's particularly beefing with Christ the third. So I don't know if I really understood this, but I was along for the ride and it's very voicey. So the writing was great. I don't know that I understood what happened, but I'm intrigued and I'm excited to see what else we get. Uh, and then the first story was from, I think Carlos Hernandez, yeah. And this was one where they're going through, I don't totally know that I understood this, but I think part of it may be that if I haven't read the book that these characters are from, maybe I'm just not gonna always get these. So I don't know, but I thought it was fun. Um, it's basically about like multi-dimensional shenanigans. There was an AI toilet and a unicorn. So it was lighthearted middle grade fantasy fun. So anyway. Like I said, tomorrow, I think I'm gonna start heavier and go to lighter so that hopefully tonally things will make a little bit more sense. But yeah, intriguing first outing with all of these books. Well, I accidentally deleted footage from days two and three. Love that for me. So we're going to adapt and overcome and we're gonna make this like a three check-in kind of situation. So I yesterday was day four, today is day five. So I'll do a day four check-in, we'll do a day eight check-in, and then we'll like wrap it up after day 12. So I think when we last talked, huh, sweet naive Mara, I was going to try to push through with my one story from each collection a day plan, but I just, I, I no. I just, I think something I've learned about myself is that that is not a strategy that works for me. So I can read like one off these stories while I'm reading another kind of like main book, but reading five stories from five different collections is just too disorienting for me. So we are back to, we are still gonna read five stories a day. That's what we've been doing. I say we, you guys haven't been doing this. I've been reading five stories a day. Also Marple is rubbing her sweet little face against my legs. So I have been reading five stories a day, but I'm just like starting with a collection and working my way through it. So I think that that is an improved strategy. So we started with The Cursed Carnival. I don't really know how to rate this 
because I think my main finding from this is this is a collection. So sometimes you can read collections that are based on series, like they have stories from long running series and it's different authors who like have a like compilation and it's fine. Like even if you haven't read the series, you can just roll with it. And I, I'd say that's true most of the time. This I think is a, is a collection that you really need to have been reading the main series to get the most out of the stories. So for that reason, I wouldn't say that I loved most of these. The ones that I did like were the one from Rick Riordan because it was a new hero. Like we, there was no, we were getting the backstory basically. And I liked that one. It was based in Celtic mythology with a main character named Finn. Marple is just being so sweet. I'm sorry, I keep getting distracted. She's like licking my legs and purring and rubbing. See, are you being a sweet girl? Yeah, yeah, she's so cute. Okay, I'm trying to focus, but it's hard. So anyway, I did like, <laughs> I like the Rick Riordan one. Yeah, it was good and I, I'm wondering if that's sort of like the backstory and he's gonna have a new series coming out with that character and I would definitely read it. I thought it was interesting. And then I really liked the Rebecca Roanhorse one. It's hard for me to tell though if it's because I read Race to the Sun, so I kind of knew the characters in the world, or if I just really love Rebecca Roanhorse's writing. I also thought it was the one that I thought probably could have been a standalone, like one of the ones I thought most easily could have been. So I don't know. I don't know. I think I gave this three stars on Goodreads. Like, I, I guess that's what I would give it. I'm going to hold on to it. And as I make my way through some of the series that are referenced in here, I'm going to go back and read the story that's related. For instance, I have Aru Shah. I have the first book in that series. So like, I would definitely come back and read that story again, um, once I understand what's going on in the world a little bit more. So I guess my recommendation here is only read these if you've already read. And then I have one story left in Her Body and Other Parties. And this is one of the best short story collections I've ever read. Everyone is a banger. They are all fantastic. So good, so perfectly crafted. I mean, you don't need me like, this is not a surprise. There's no bad stories in here. There's ones I like more than others. I would say so far the ones I've liked the best are the first story, The Husband Stitch. The second story I think was called Inventories. Inventory. And it's like the author or the narrator like talking about each of her sexual encounters and like what that was like. So it's almost like these little vignettes, but it's also like in a pandemic. So that was such a cool, I don't know. It was so good. I do think I tend to be somebody who really likes formal inventiveness in short stories. So for instance, my other favorite one is called Especially Heinous. And it's, uh, I, I don't even know how to describe this. Especially Heinous 272 Views of Law and Order SVU. Okay, let me just read you a couple to give you like a sense of the vibe. So it's the name of the episode and then a little comment or there's also like stories developing within the comments. So one is called The Sophomore Jinx and it says the second time the basketball team covers up a murder, the coach decides he's finally had enough. So like that made me laugh. I thought that was funny. There's one that's called Slaves and it says the precincts interns are monsters. When it's slow, they dick around on the phones into the dial tones they chirp SVU, Manhattan's rapiest police department. They have theories about Sabler and Benson. They take bets, they place lilacs, Benson's favorite in her locker, and Daisy's, Stabler's, and his. The interns drug Benson and Stabler's coffees, and then after they fall asleep in the back room, the interns shove the cuts closer together and place both the detectives in compromising positions. Benson and Stabler wake up hours later, their hands on each other's cheeks, both wet with tears. So like, that's, <laughs> that's kind of, I don't know how to describe that story, question mark, that reading experience, but I really liked that. Um, yeah, they're all so good. Eight Bites, I thought was also great, which is about <sighs> mothers and daughters and they're real, like what mothers teach their daughters about their bodies and about food and about diet culture. It's so good. So on today, today day five, all that to say, this is gonna be five stars. The last story could be absolute horseshit and it would still be five stars. The, today on day five, I'm gonna read the last story and then we're going to pivot to the Marple one. Also my friend Amanda for my birthday sent me this Agatha Christie bookmark. So that's gonna become my official bookmark when I'm reading anything related to Agatha Christie. So I will read four stories in this today once the last story in this one. So that's the plan. I am gonna go ahead and give you guys like a rundown of each of the stories in this one because I know a lot of people wanna know 
my thoughts. So this one is up next. This one was amazing. And yeah, I'll check in with you guys either after I finish reading on day eight or on day nine, reflecting on the last four days. Okay, checking in after day eight. I'm still, I think one thing we've learned is that I'm not very good at predicting what I'm gonna be in the mood to read in terms of short stories, because once again, I think when we last spoke, I said, oh, I'm gonna read the Marvel collection next, which is certainly not what I did. Instead, I finished all of The World Doesn't Require You by Ryan Almacar Scott. Uh, I have made progress on the Marvel collection, but I'm gonna save my full updates for the last check-in so that I can go through all the stories. Yeah, The World Doesn't Require You was an interesting book. This book made me feel pretty dumb. I'm not sure that I was smart enough to fully understand it. I wonder if I, also it cracks me up because it makes me feel like it's pushing against me when I hold it up like this. I wonder if I had been reading it with people, if maybe I would have gotten more out of it because I just feel like it's really dense. Reference wise, it's really dense. It has a lot of ideas in it. And I like all the ideas. I don't know if I love them. How to say this? I think I appreciate this as art. I don't know that I loved this as a collection of enjoyment. In a way that, let's let's try to be, have better words, Mara. Let's try to draw this out and actually have some self-reflection. I think for Carmen Maria Machado, it is also very smart and very idea driven. I think that it was less experimental. Mm. It had experimental stories in it, but I think there was more for me to get my arms around in terms of the plot and story, or at least I could follow it. Maybe I just, I don't know. I think the kind of smart this book is, is just not, I just am not good at deciphering it. So I recommend this. If you're looking for something like very idea heavy, if you're looking for something that's gonna make you think and kind of make you work a lot when you're reading it, I could see this being a really good book club pick. This is art, no question about it. I think it just was not a personal favorite of mine. If I had to pick some stories that stood out to me, he seems just trying to chew up a cord. If I had to pick some favorites from this collection, I would say the first one where we meet uh, God's son, David, I think is his name. Yeah, David Sherman. That I thought was, pr I would say that was actually probably my favorite in the whole collection. If I, I wonder, oh, here's a thought. I also wonder maybe if he's an author who, if I had just encountered like a couple of his stories in an anthology, if I would have appreciated it more, it may just be that an entire book of this was not as much to my liking. Maybe that's it. If I had found that collected somewhere, I would have been really excited to read more from him, but it turns out an entire collection of this is maybe not my favorite. The other one that I really liked, what was it called? I think it was called The Electric Joy of Service. Yeah, The Electric Joy of Service, which features a robot whose name I am not gonna say, but I thought that was a really interesting story and an interesting through line. So definitely things to enjoy about this. If I had to rate the collection as a whole, I probably say three and a half stars uh, with some things that I really, really enjoyed in it, but also some things that I'm like, I just don't think I understand this. I, I'm just not, I'm not getting it, but I'm glad I finally read it. So that was good. And when we next check in, we'll be talking about Ted Chiang's collection and my thoughts about the Marvel collection. Okay, guys, we are at the end of the road of this little experiment. So, um, well, I know a lot of you want to hear my reviews of this, so we'll save that for last to make it easier for me to timestamp. So, I did finish Stories of Your Life and Others by Ted Chiang. Fantastic. So good. Both of the collections I have read from this author have been absolutely superlative. This one, I would say, is even more literary then Exhalation, like I felt like Exhalation read a little bit more like sci-fi or speculative fiction. This definitely has a ton of speculative elements in it and like definitely could be thought of as literary sci-fi. It definitely kind of rides the line. But for me, I did feel like there was a slightly more literary quality to this one. God, these are all just great. Um, in terms of which ones connected with me more, I would say my favorites are probably Understand. It's the second story and it is about a guy who's getting injected with this serum to make him smarter and he becomes so smart that he is 
well, you'll have to read to find out, but it's what happens to him once his intelligence starts growing at such an exponential rate. I also really liked 72 Letters, which is about basically, uh, it's set in the Victorian-ish era, and it's kind of steampunk, and they discover that all human men's sperm will stop working in five more generations. So like, how are we gonna keep the species going? So that was interesting. And then I would say probably, yeah, probably my favorite is Hell is the Absence of God. This, woo, this is this idea of like angels being real. And I think I may pick this for philosophy like whoa to read just this short story with my friend Kim because this is a whopper. <laughs> it's so good and yet so intense. It's amazing. So I really, really love this. Is it an all time favorite collection? No, because I think that there are some stories I connected with more than others, but it definitely contains one of my favorite sh short stories I've ever read, which is Hell is the Absence of God. And so I'm gonna give this four and a half stars. So this was fantastic. I'm also very pleased to report to you that I thought this was great. I'm between a four and a four and a half on this. I don't know that I had enough of a, an emotional connection to enough of these stories for it to be a four and a half. And I wouldn't say any of these is like an all time favorite short story. So I think I'm gonna land at a four, but I am very, I'm not gonna say pleasantly surprised, but delighted to report that I really, really love this because I wasn't sure. You know, when you have people writing for a beloved character that you know and adore, it can get dicey. I mean, literally, one of my cats is named after Ms. Marple. Her name is Marple. So I'm definitely very connected to this character, to this author's work, so you just don't know. But I felt like it was actually really hard for me to pick my favorites. So let's just do a run through. Now guys, I feel so bad saying, <laughs> I feel so bad saying this because you guys know I really want to like Lucy fully, but it is clearly to me the worst one. Ugh. Just on a writing level, I just don't think it's very good. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Okay, so that's uh, Evil in Small Places. Naomi Alderman one, I would say, is another one that I, I felt like was weaker. Not because it wasn't well written. It was actually very well written. It just, I didn't feel like, it was the one that felt the least like Marple to me. So I really liked her writing. This makes me want to read more from her, but I didn't think it succeeded as a Marple. So that one's about like kind of academic type mystery. What is another one that I thought was not as successful? Murder at the Villa Rosa by Ellie Griffiths is a really interesting idea. I think it was an interesting short story, but again, it just completely did not feel like Marple. It's basically about an author who thinks they're going on a writer's retreat, but then shady stuff is happening and she's sort of just like tangentially there. So both the mystery and her inclusion in the mystery, I felt like were not sufficient considering it's a Marple collection. So those were the three I would say were the weakest. Let's do superlatives for the rest, shall we? Val McDermott, I think it's the award for the smartest approach because she follows, it's basically a follow-up to Murder at the Vicarage. So we are getting our point of view from the rector and I thought she nailed that. And I thought that that was just a smart approach to it. Most entertaining without feeling like Marple, I'm gonna say is a tie between Miss Marple Takes Manhattan by Alyssa Cole and The Disappearance by Lee Bardugo. Neither of them, I thought both of them were missing an essential like understanding of the character of Marple, but I found both of those to be very entertaining stories. The Unraveling by Natalie Haynes was a very Marple plot but I, d I thought the writing didn't have quite enough pizzazz. Uh, and then I would say Kate Moss, her story was one of the most Christie-esque in terms of both the type of plot and the writing and the solution. So I would give her a big bonus there. Karen McManus's I thought was really good. I've not loved what I've read from her up to this point, but I really liked it. And I would read a YA spinoff of that short story. I thought it was very well executed. And then Drita Say Mitchell, A Deadly Wedding Day. I thought that was another one that felt very Christie-esque while being still forward looking. I had a couple of quibbles about some of the pacing and the clue sprinkling in, but I thought that one was really good. But if we are talking about the two authors who I would nominate to write a full Marple novel or to write a full Marple collection, for me, it's a toss up between Ruth Ware and Jean Kwok. Ruth Ware's, I thought, had the best combination of feeling like Christie's writing, 
feeling like the Marple character and having a very Christie plot, including an incorporation from a contemporary work. She did that quite a bit specifically in the Tommy and Tuppence short story, so I thought that was smart. So I think if you want to go sort of the safe route, I would give it to Ruth Ware. But Jean Kwok, I thought, had the best combination of feeling very Christie in its plot choices and in the Marple character, but being kind of forward looking and being a little more critical of some of Christie's kind of underlying worldview or kind of just the time and place. So I think that she had the best balance of that. I would say be between her and Drita, say Mitchell, but I think I'd give it to Jean Kwok. So Ruth Ware or Jean Kwok would be my nominees for that. Those were, I would say, the two best in the sense of being like Marple, but I thought on the whole it was a very strong collection and I'm excited for people to read it and let me know what they think. In terms of the overall project guys, let's put this in order. I had a three, I had a three, a three and a half, a four, a four and a half, a four and a half. <laughs> okay, a four and a half and a five. Sorry, my SD card filled up, so had to change that out. Okay, so I think I was saying that we have one at every star and half star rating from three to five. And what did I learn from this? Well, I think I rediscovered my love of short stories because clearly three of these I really liked or loved. Even the two that are kind of more in like a B range, I still enjoyed. And I do really still love short stories. I think I've discovered that I don't do well jumping around between collections and short stories. I do often have a short story collection, maybe not often, but I can have a short story collection going while I have a novel going. I think I struggle to have multiple short story collections going. And I think that when I am focused on reading short stories, I prefer to kind of read it all. I did find breaking up my reading into five story increments each day. I did not necessarily love that as an experience. I kind of want the freedom to binge the whole collection or to just kind of sprinkle it in here or there, a la an essay collection. So yeah, I still am glad that I did this because I, I learned a little bit more about myself as a short story reader, a little short story summer. I do recommend short stories if you are having a little bit of trouble getting into your reading. And since I have been kind of struggling to get back into my reading groove over the last couple of months, I think that this was well worth some time dedicated to it. So yeah. I think that will do it for this vlog. Let me know what you thought of any of the books that I read. Let me know if you are a reader or lover of short stories. If you have any recommendations for collections, definitely drop those in the comments below. And yeah, I think that that will do it for me. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social meds if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below. And I think that that will do it. I hope you're having an absolutely lovely day today. And I will just talk to you soon. Bye!